What's up guys, Wally here. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to find practice data sets on Kaggle for your data analysis project. This is a question I get asked frequently on the channel. So I decided to do a video to show you how to navigate the site Kaggle.com and fetch data for your active recall exercises. If you remember in my last video, I talked about using active recall techniques to learn data analysis faster. If you haven't seen that video, links will be in the description below. So today's video is a continuation of that video, which is how do you find the different data sets you use to practice. Now, this is going to be a two parts video. And the first part is this video where I show you how to navigate cargo.com and find data sets. While the second part is where I analyze the data sets we find in this video. Of course, if you want to see that video, do subscribe to the channel so that you get notified once the video drops. Without wasting any more time, let's jump right into my computer. So right here is the Kaggle.com landing page, which is where you have different sections of the website. So you have sections like home, competition, data sets, codes, discussions, and courses. Today, we're going to be focusing on the data set section. So to get started, navigate to the menu and click on the data sets. Once open, you will see trending data sets, popular data sets. Now, if you want to explore more of the data set section, you can click on explore all public data sets to explore the entire repo. So I'm just going to click on explore to start digging in. Once it opens, you land on the data set listing page. The top right of the listing page are filters to help you quickly get to what you're looking for, where you're, looking, where you're going. Now, there are some quick features that gives you a sense of the data before opening it up, like the user who uploaded, who updated the data on cargo and how long ago it was updated. Then you, you also see something called the usability, which I'll come back to in a minute. Um, you have the file type, which could be a CSV, spreadsheet, JPEG, and lastly, the size of the data. Now back to usability rating. It is a feature that makes it easy for anyone to find high quality and well-documented data sets. Typically, each data set is ranked from one to 10 based on how easy to use the data set is with respect to the level of documentation, availability of related public content and coverage of metadata. I won't bore you with the technicalities. All you need to know is the higher the number, the better. Although I'm never too concerned if the number is low, as long as you can use the data for whatever you want to use it for. At the far right, you have some badges that look like medals. These are for the cargo progression system and competitions. If you want to enroll into cargo competition, then you can explore this further. Finally, before we jump into a data set, the ellipsis next to the badge is a quick way to download the data set without opening the data set overview page. Now, let's say you found an interesting data set you want to explore. In this case, I found the Olympic Games data set. This is the data we'll be working with in my next video. Now, let's go through some more sections in the overview page. To do that, you click on your chosen data set from the data set listing page and it opens the data set overview page and that defaults onto the data tab. Now let's quickly look at the contents of the other tabs before we get back to the data tab. So just next to the data tab, you have the tasks tab. This is where you will find if there are any assigned tasks to the data sets by the owner or any other user. More so, you could also create a new task. This is a great way to collaborate with the cargo community and find answers to questions you always wanted to know about the data. The code tab is where you have code related content. You get to see how other users carried out their analysis using code, mostly with Python and R. Next to the code tab is the discussion tab to which you'll find discussions by users. Discussions are ranked based on hotness, which I find quite interesting. 
Then the activity tab is where you have the activity history of the data set. Activity stats, download per month, top contributor, top contributor countries. And I'm not surprised by the countries I'm seeing here. If you do not see your country represented and you want to do something about it, just head over to this, head over to Kaggle.com and comment on this data. The last tab is the metadata tab. You'll find user information such as who maintains the data set and updates. To the far right, you have a quick download button. Again, if you just want to cut to the chase and download the file. Now let's go back to the data tab and go through some more details. So on the data tab, you'll find the description of the data set, how it was sourced and where. If you scroll down a little, you'll see the data explorer where you get to see the size of the complete file, the number of files and the file names contained in the zip folder. Once you click on any of the files in the data explorer, you'll see to your right a small section loads up where you can view the content of each file. This section has its own mini tab where you have detail, compact and color. I'll go over each one, uh, but they are all similar. In the detail tab, you would see the column attributes in the file as the first row. The second row, you'll find summary details of each column, right? So the summary details is more like a summary chart for, for the attributes in each column. Summary details like unique values for text strings, how many unique values are present in the data, percentages for repeated string data like countries, sex, um, or what percentage does the string make up as part of the whole. You also have things like frequency distributions for integers like height, weight, age data. This is like your histogram or normal distribution, also known as bell curve. Now, the compact tab is the same as the detail tab without the summary details of each column. And then the column tab, you'll find an expanded view of the summary details of each of the column, of each column with graphs, summary calculations like mean, median, mode, ranges, standard deviation, and so on. At the bottom left of the section, you have another summary of the data and the number of columns within the file. And lastly, at the very bottom, there are details as to the number of times the data set you're looking at has been viewed and downloaded. In my next video, I'm gonna perform an analysis on the Olympic Games data set using Microsoft Excel. You can head over to cargo.com and download the same data set. Make sure you give the data set an upvote as a little appreciation to the data set owner. Also, let me know down in the comment section what questions or what would you like to see answered in the analysis. And as always, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.